June 9th, 2022. One year ago today, I said goodbye. I had no idea what type of year I was about to have. I didn't realize that not only would I be saying goodbye to a two-year relationship that I gave my all in, and saying goodbye to someone I love so deeply, I was also saying goodbye to my first boyfriend, my first lover, and I would also be saying goodbye to my old self. I was saying goodbye to everything that I knew, who I thought it was, and the pressure to be someone I knew I wasn't. Some might think I'm crazy for bringing this up again. Some might think I'm stupid for not letting it go. Some might question if I'm a good person for continually bringing this up. However, this is my story, and what I did after I left is what has shaped me. And today, I asked the question of what has this past year looked like for me? What have I done to not let the abuse define me? What have I done to heal? What have I done to forgive? What have I done so that I don't fall into the mindset of, this is all your fault and you should have known better? I'm going to get vulnerable here and we will be talking about different people in this video and how I will eventually come to forgive each and every single one of them. One year ago today, as I was strangled and beat in the backyard of my boyfriend's house, and eventually I was told by law enforcement that I needed to go and meet them somewhere safe, as my boyfriend was getting handcuffed and taken off to jail. One year ago today was the day that I wouldn't come to realize for several months that all of my prayers and all my cries for help for two years would suddenly be answered. I wish I could describe how I felt that day, after being told I was not in a safe situation, but I am afraid that we'll, there will never be words to describe the fear, the sadness, the anxiety, the fear of the unknown, and how lost I felt in that very moment. I was praying, pleading to God to have this day come sooner. I tried approximately 10 times to leave. However, June 9th, 2021 was the day that that all changed. I couldn't believe that I was now a part of this extremely high stat of being a victim of domestic violence, not only physically, emotionally, financially, and mentally, but sexually. For months, I told myself that what he was doing was completely normal. I wanted to believe that the only reason he was so controlling was because he cared about me. I wanted to believe that spending more time with his family was because that's how everyone that was dating someone did it. I wanted to believe that the reason he did not allow me to be alone was because he cared about my well-being. I didn't want to believe that all these things that I was reading about domestic violence and sexual abuse were actually happening to me, I of all people. I didn't want to believe it at all. I promised myself that I would pick good people to hang out with. I promised myself that I would know when to get out of a bad situation. I promised myself that if I was ever in a difficult situation that I would go to a trusted adult I was scared to admit what I was going through. However, I didn't get help. I was scared because I didn't know what people would think, what they would do, and what they would say. I let myself down. I let my friends down. I let my family down. I left my religion down. I let all the things that I knew prior to this relationship down. Until that very night as I was getting strangled, pleading to God in front of my abuser to save me from the hell that I was in. There was a car that I saw in the very corner of my eye that I would later come to find out. They call law enforcement. They saved my life. They are my heroes and will be my heroes forever. I cried for hours after I got home. The amount of pain and abandonment that I felt knowing that he was now in jail and that the charges were going to be on his record forever were indescribable. I couldn't help but feel defeated. I never wanted this for someone who I cared about. However, I knew what he had done to me, so it was time to accept this new reality. I felt relieved to get out of a relationship that was sucking the life out of me, but at the same time, unbelievably devastated. I let him down. I let myself down. I let my friends down. I let my family down. And I let God down. The weeks following this were the worst weeks of my life, but also filled with hope. I didn't really tell anyone the details of that night besides a couple of people. I told two of my closest friends, my parents, and one of my brothers. I had called a friend who we had just seen the night prior. She had called me while I was sitting in the back of a police car. I sent her to my voicemail. 
I sat in the car and planned out what and how I was going to tell her. We hung out after the incident and without a doubt, she scooped me up and we went for a drive so that I didn't have to go to the women's shelter for the night. And after hanging out with her, I called the other friend and we went out and talked until 2 a.m. I didn't know how much I missed my friends and the unity that I longed for until that night. I hadn't been able to hang out with whomever I wanted until whatever time I wanted in close to two years. I felt wrong doing what I was doing that night after. I felt wrong for texting my friends. It felt so wrong staying out so late with my friends. It felt wrong eating whatever I wanted. It felt wrong not telling anybody where I was going. Every little thing felt so wrong. Every person I talked to days after the incident dragged me into a different direction of what they wanted for me, what they felt like needed to happen with my new chapter, how they wished it would have ended, how they thought I should have handled the situation, and how they thought I should have gone way earlier. Move far across the country to a new state. We warned you. You should have known. Go on a mission. Go to school. With all of the words of advice that I got that weren't lifting my spirits up, I had a lot of people lift me up and say, We are so sorry to hear what you went through. You are so strong. You deserve all the happiness in the world. We couldn't even begin to imagine what you went through. Take your time healing. God still loves you. The abuse is not and will not ever be your fault. Now you see, I carried on despite all the different opinions I got in regards to this topic because that's the only thing I ever knew how to do. Four months had passed and I felt like I was getting somewhere. I felt like I was moving on. I felt like I was starting to come out of my shell again. I felt like I was starting to regain the friendships that I had completely cut out. I felt like I was starting to see myself again. I started going back to church, although I was completely lost and didn't remember how to do the whole church thing. I continued on. After about four months, I felt okay again. I decided to give dating a go again. Met some of the best people in the entire world. People who challenged me to be better. I met people who taught me how to feel love again, who taught me that good people still exist. Four months in, I decided to start taking mini trips by myself every once in a while. I started getting out of bed and making plans with my friends. And I decided, since I felt like I would finally regain some of that freedom again, I finally felt somewhat of myself again. I took a solo trip to California, which was a huge step for me. I booked a flight, called some people, made sleeping arrangements, packed up my car, drove myself to the airport, and landed in my most favorite place in the world with the people I love so dearly. Four months in, and it was starting to feel like my life again. The moment I stepped off the plane was the moment that I realized I was finally free again. For the four days I was there, I had not a care in the world. It was like the pain was completely gone. It was like I almost forgot what happened to me. It was amazing. I didn't have to worry about if I was going to run into him at Target and get beat up again. I didn't have to worry about running to his crazy father that almost hurt me too. I didn't have to worry about running into his siblings or his mom and even his friends. It was so refreshing. I was able to get up when I wanted. I was able to wear the outfits that I wanted. I was able to hang out with my family. It was the best week of my entire life. I ended up coming back feeling so refreshed, feeling like I felt safe in my hometown again. I felt like I could conquer the world. A few months after I had gotten back from California, I noticed that I was starting to be stalked again. I often wonder why. Why after six months does he care? Why after six months of choosing to heal does he want to slip back into my life again? Does he see how freaking happy I am? Does he see how I'm in love with life again? Why? This is then that I decided somebody higher up needed to know my story. I fought in court for a protective order fought for three months for someone to understand the hell that I had been through and for them to grant my wish. After all this work I put into my happiness, I felt defeated again. I felt unsafe in my own hometown. I couldn't pick myself back up again. After three months of fighting, pulling witnesses, pulling evidence, I won. I freaking won. 
and I won in life again. I was free, and that was the biggest fight I had fought. This past year, I always tried to take the higher road. I was honest with people about the hurt I've been through, and I decided that I didn't care what other people thought. This is me, and this is my story. And now, here I am, one year later, and I think that I am doing pretty dang good. I made some of my best friends over the last year. Some of my best friends came home from their missions. My testimony is stronger than ever. I started a podcast with a friend. I have started advocating for domestic violence survivors. I have completely and full-heartedly forgiven my ex and his family for their wrongdoings. I wish him nothing but happiness and hope and pray that I am the only one he'll ever hurt. I have forgiven the people that accused me of not getting out of it sooner. I forgave myself for allowing me to be in that situation. I am not 100% healed, but what I can tell you is that I am doing so well. I am thriving. When it comes down to it, I am so thankful that I went through what I did. The atonement of Jesus Christ saved me. I chased God from the moment that he answered my prayer until now. I chased him with every ounce that I had because I knew I would never be at this point in my life happy and thriving without him. I miss my living hell. I found Christ again. He healed me. He walked through this with me. He forgave me. He taught me how to forgive. He let me rant to him when things got so hard again, even after leaving. He kept me from going out and hurting my ex for all the hurt that he caused me. He picked me up off of the ground and gave me a much better life to live. He helped me get into school. He helped me decide my major and what I really wanted to do with my life. This past year was incredibly challenging, but also incredibly freeing. I am now the person I have always wanted to become. I am now the woman God wanted me to be. I am no longer living for anybody else but myself and God. A year ago today, God closed a door in my life, and I'm only alive because of where God has led me. So, a year ago today, I left an abusive relationship that I never thought I would have ever gone through as a 20-year-old and haven't looked back since then. I am the most content I've ever been with my life. I'm actually pretty happy, I must say. Like, really happy. In three months I start school, I start a brand new chapter that I'm absolutely terrified of. But it's what I need to be doing. And I know that I will be able to get through anything I put my mind to. I talked about something in here that I never thought I would ever say to the universe. This is simply all about the things I learned. How I overcame the things in my life. How I came to forgive the people that hurt me the most. And how... I came back to God. I went to therapy and to support groups to heal from things I never thought I'd be able to heal from. Thank you for all of your support over the last year. I couldn't have done it without all of my best friends, Jesus, and my family. I am so thankful for this year that honestly has been one of the hardest and best years of my life. Here's to another best year of my life. I absolutely cannot wait.